Aloha everyone. This is June 22nd through the 29th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Let's get into it. We begin June 22nd back up at Fisher 8. The eruption at Fisher 8 is mostly unchanged. There's starting to be a little bit of some characteristics emerging that were first pointed out by USGS, but then we start to track as well. And those involve the collapses and the surges and pulses that are seen at Fisher 8. We'll go into that a little bit more in a minute, but first I want to just talk about some of the lava looky loos that are going around Leilani Estates and other parts of uh, the subdivisions that have been impacted. One of the things that's happening is that these people are sneaking past the barricades at night or even during the day in order to get the view of Fisher 8 and get that first-hand experience. But by doing so, they're trespassing and entering into people's properties, even converting houses that are on the perimeter of the eruption site into party houses where people will rage it all night. So there won't be necessarily theft, but there's unintentional vandalism almost. And that's just something that ends up happening. Here we get a top-down look at Fisher 8 and the upper lava channel, we see that a section of it has crusted over with lava passing underneath it, creating a small lava tube. Lava tubes aren't really associated with AA flows. They are more associated with the slower Pohoi Hoi flows. But here we have this one section up by the top of Fisher 8, which has lava moving through it. <laughs> There's Phil. Phil, you ready for do an update later on? Get some live music for all the evacuees. Look at that. Puhu Onuopuna, also known as the hub, continues to be a pillar of resilience for the community. Kaika Marzo and geologist Philip Ong are doing daily updates on the situation on the ground as well as what the community is doing in order to react to it. Their information is invaluable for many in the community and becomes the main point of information distribution for many people. All right, let's talk about the pulses and the surges of Fisher 8. I teased them a little bit earlier, but let's go a little bit in depth on these things. First, the pulses. The pulses are the short-term fluctuations in volume at Fisher 8. They'd last for five to 10 minutes and they'd be in these uptick and influx in the volume coming out of the fissure, which would correspond to the amount of lava moving through the channel. These wouldn't really change the volcanic hazard in any way, but they were noticeable inside the channel itself. Second is the surges. While the pulses happen multiple times a day, the surges happened only once a day in correlation with the collapse event at the summit. So the summit would go through a sudden collapse, a magnitude 5.3 earthquake would be recorded, and then an hour to an hour and a half later, we would see a surge of lava arrive at Fisher 8. And this was a very noticeable uptick in volume, so much so that the lava channel would overflow. This phenomenon, the surges and the pulses, were not able to be identified cleanly in the beginning stages of the eruption, and the beginning stages of Fisher 8 for that matter. These emerge in late June and we start to see them become more and more noticeable which e with each collapse event. What you're seeing here is aerial animal rescues of cattle that have been trapped inside of areas by the 2018 eruption. These guys went in with bulldozers in order to establish this ad hoc helicopter pad to do these airlifts out. It was a huge effort and a successful one at that. We conclude June 24th with a look at the thermal map produced by USGS. The thermal map shows that the lava ocean entry is still moving to the south and is working its way closer to Aha Anui Warm Pond and Cool Kala Charter School. We pick up on June 25th back down at the ocean entry. The lava delta that has been established over the course of the eruption so far is over two miles wide. The active section that is still feeding lava into the ocean is over a half mile wide itself. We see out in the ocean though that there's a discoloration. This 
seemingly barrier where the color of the ocean changes. This is due to an algae bloom that gets spawned due to the ocean entry feeding so much nutrient rich material out into the ocean. Some photoplankton ends up exploding and creating this algae bloom that is very noticeable from the air. Meanwhile, back up the Kilauea caldera, the daily summit collapse events are ongoing and the magnitude 5.3 earthquake that is associated with it rocks the residents of Volcano Village. As night on the 25th comes, the activity of Fisher 8 remains mostly unchanged. The status quo remains and activity remains extremely high. The one thing that is starting to change is the authorities are starting to stiffen their response and their control over the access into the eruption site, including penalties for those that are caught inside of the restricted area taking photos or just looking for themselves. This increases the importance of the aerial footage that guys like Mick Calber and Bruce Omari are providing daily. This is June 25th. This is shot from Cavono Street. All the smoke's coming from the canyon that filled in. I believe on May 27th. Today is June 25th. Can't see any splatter coming over, but it is going out. I do see some fissures down the line that are kind of sparking. It's that lone tree on Nohea. We begin June 26th back down at the ocean entry in Kapoho to look at the sediment that is collecting on the sides of the ocean entry. The sediment consists of mostly loose rocks and sand that are being driven by the predominant ocean currents from the north to the southwest. The interesting thing about the sediment is that the ocean ends up being uh, amazing rock tumbler. It's knocking off the sharp edges of the sediment and making rather smooth rocks that are deposited back along the coastline to form the new beaches. This thermal map from June 26 produced by the USGS shows the ocean entry continuing to work to the south and this over half mile wide ocean entry point running along the coastline. As the morning of June 27th arises, the residents of Kapoho, at least those that remain, are in for more bad news. Though the ocean entry is continuing to primarily move to the south, the north inside of the Kapoho farm lots is expanding the flanks as well and consuming more homes as it does so. We get another look at the Kuo Kala Charter School and the Aho Anui Warren Pond as the lava continues to encroach upon them. Both of these beloved facilities are going to become more and more in the crosshairs as the coming days progress. Here we get a first-hand up-close view of one of these lava rafts making its way down the lava channel. This large rock that's being pushed by the lava down the channel is a section of the channel wall that has broken off. It's still exceedingly hot and molten, as you can see when it starts to break apart. And it's gonna be moved all the way down the lava channel until it either finds a place to stall or makes it all the way to the ocean entry itself. We conclude June 27th with a look at the thermal map produced by the USGS, which shows the ocean entry continuing it to work its way to the south, but also this new breakout that happened in the Kapoho farm lots on the north side of the ocean entry. We also have activity at Fisher 22. It's not producing a flow, but it is active. The night of the 27th is rather stressful for those that are paying close attention to Kapoho. This breakout in the northern part of the lava delta the previous day had already taken at least one home and threatened several others. We really don't know overnight what the status of these homes are and if they will still be standing come morning. In the morning overflight from Bruce Omari and Mick Calver, we see that many of them are still standing, including the one blue home in the beach lots standing strong. Here we get another look at one of these lava rafts making its way down the lava channel. 
On the night of the 28th, we get this aerial footage from the upper part of Fisher 8, which shows this small lava tube and a skylight showing the lava moving beneath it as the upper part of the lava channel changes more and more each day. Subtly, really, but when you look at comparisons week to week, it's rather dramatic. So I believe it was the 29th that I went out to the backside of Fisher 8. We went with some guys from Leilani Estates and we were out on the backside of the cone in all of the reticulite, all this tephra and Pele's hair that has been blowing out of the eruptive vent. So we're out there and then I make a mistake. I set my bag down. Seems rather innocent. We take some photos, walk around for a little bit, and then I realize I screwed up when I went to put the backpack back on. It was now filled with all these filaments of Pele's hair. So it's essentially my backpack is just fiberglass filaments being embedded into my back the whole way out of there. Kind of funny look back on now, but I won't make that mistake again. That'll do it for June 22nd through June 29th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. This episode, we looked at some of the algae blooms that were happening offshore of the ocean entry, some of the lava rafts making their way down the lava channel, and the collapse explosions and their impacts on the people of Volcano Village. Until the next one, aloha.